about almost five minutes in. All right, let's get started. And everybody that'll come in, they'll just come in and catch it and they can catch the replay. Um, uh, welcome everybody who's here. Um, thank you for being with us this afternoon um, to the, what is this, the fourth talk today. No, the third talk today, uh, but the fourth talk for, man, I'm starting to, I think it's the fifth talk of the series now. <laughs> <laughs> I know we've been doing so many of been so much greatness. I've been immersed in so much art. It's been so cool. Um, but I'm happy to have two awesome artists with us today as part of the whole exhibition and with us in the talks. Um, Monica Segos and Patrice Robinson. Um, welcome, ladies. Um, I'm literally just ecstatic to have you as part of this. Um, I've admired your works and your process for, you know, a while now um, and really was excited when you accepted to be a part of the exhibition. Um, as I do in the beginning of all these talks, I kind of give a preview, not a preview, but of a rundown of what the exhibition is and the theme is. Um, Portraits of Yesteryear um, is basically the theme of understanding the change and the events that happen in our life, the different portraits, not necessarily um, subjective meaning a person, but also a place, a time, event, a moment that captures the change uh, in our society. Um, not just our society, but in our families, um, in our everyday life, in our appearance. Um, and I think everyone's works uh, just really embodied that, and I'm just so appreciative of it. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just, <clears throat> excuse me, introduce everyone to uh, you ladies and get a background of who you are as artists and the process. And being that Patrice has started off in the, the cold, we'll, we'll let her go first. <laughs> so Patrice, take the floor. Okay. Well, um, I'm from, originally from New York, and I've been in New York my entire life. Um, I'm an oil painter and usually I focus on portraits of people, usually black and brown individuals. Um, a lot of my work uh, thematically is about like uh, spirituality, family, ancestry, um, a lot about uh, the emotional aspect of the human um, experience Basically, yeah, and so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Monica? Well, thank you, Badir, and uh, so nice to be with you too, Patrice. Um, I, um, I'm late to the game as far as being an artist. I um, graduated from art school in 2016. I'm, I was born in New York City, and I live in Los Angeles, and um, you know, I, I'm an installation artist and I kind of um, tell stories with my installations. They're very immersive and interactive and I have a separate performance um, practice as well as digital. But when the um, coronavirus hit and everybody went into lockdown, I was like, oh my God, my installations are now homeless. There's nowhere to have an installation and have it be able to be immersive in any way. And a couple of things happened just within the past couple of months. Um, um, when Badir got his drone and then the Black Lives Matter um, protests happened here in LA and he was filming them. And I was just blown away by the the filmmaking and the visuals and the color and everything about um, those works. And I said, oh my God, I have to work with him somehow. And um, I had no idea what it was gonna be. I figured it was gonna be a performance, but then um, I started taking this mass class with um, Brian Melillo, um, from Morbid Anatomy, and one of the um, one of the masks I was interested in was this mask was was a body mask by the Asmat peoples, um, 
And I said, I want to make a body mask myself. So I said, this is what I want to do with Badir. I want to make this mask. And it was about unmasking myself. Um, and um, that's when I asked him to, if he would be interested. And of course, <laughs> he said yes before he even knew what the, what the concept was. It didn't matter. He was just down for it. And um, so that's how it happened that we worked together on this concept. And um, um, I don't know if I should go any further, but I'm sure you'll ask me more questions. Yeah, I'm going to. I got plenty of questions for y'all. Please okay. believe. Um, for when you first heard about the title of the exhibition, how did you think about the work that you were going to include? Are you speaking with me? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Patrice, let's go first with Patrice. <laughs> um, well, recently, well, immediately I thought about um, getting a portrait of someone wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently I just started going out on the street mm -hmm. and trying to get photographs of people and, um, you know, going up to them and asking for their portrait. But for this particular painting, you know, I saw this man sitting on a bench in Harlem reading a newspaper he just seemed so unbothered you know it was freezing outside but he was bundled up and he had his newspaper you know it was so many people milling about around him but he was just relaxed and very calm so i just tried to capture his image as best as i could and then i thought about putting it on a metro card mm. and tying it into like that new york city theme one of one of the questions i've had about your work, Patrice, is how do you continuously add the life into your work, even through digital? I mean, it feels like even through the digital, through my screen, I can touch my screen and still feel wow. your works. How are you able to, like, literally just graduate the oil, you know, to a, a, a whole new just realm? Like, I'm impressed. Like, I really am. I had to get that out. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a big compliment. I, I don't know. I just really try to focus on the face because I feel like the emotion, you know, is captured the most in the face and the eyes. Um, yeah, I just love painting portraits because it just really fascinates me. Like, people really fascinate me, so... Did the did the guy with the mask see the uh, final portrait that you painted? Or oh, the first question is, did you paint that while he was there? Oh no, no, no. Uh, I was going to say you <laughs> are. <laughs> you know, it's so funny because I was standing there with my camera, and he looked at me like a couple of times, but he was so unbothered. He was just like, okay, you know. And she takes a photo. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And Monica, what does the what does the title of the show mean to you in your practice? Well, it's really um, very much of a self-portrait of the coronavirus um, pandemic. I mean, it's, to me, I wouldn't have um, done this performance piece with uh, the drone. Mm -hmm if this had not happened. So it's, it's just, and I feel very much that it's a turning point in my practice um, because it's very much of a self-portrait. And I didn't, you know, obviously I wouldn't, couldn't have known what I was gonna look like from the drone. So when I saw the um, footage, I was completely blown away because it was so clear to me that the inside was coming out into the camera. Um, it was very, uh, very much to self-portrait, even though I didn't take it, the, that is, um, you, you performed captured. it though. Pardon me? You performed it. Yes. Yes. It, it, it was really the inside of me expressing myself outwardly. So that's something that, um, is very rare to capture with me, to be honest. <laughs> What I, what I wanted to ask about this project with you too, was it, was it easier for you to release and get more out of your artistry 
in that open space as opposed to a studio? What do you mean by open space? Like oh, I'm sorry. This is this is for Monica. I'm sorry. I'm 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 okay. sorry. I'm not directing. I'm. <laughs> I would say yes, yes, because um, it w was um, because I had no expectations. I, the only thing I knew was that Badir was going to be filming it and that it was going to be good. I just didn't know how good, and um, so I was just I trusted him completely. So the fact that I trusted him completely allowed me to express myself and, and be in the moment that I was in expressing myself and my feelings about just the space I was in, the, it was a beautiful day and, and just moving and, and allowing my um, inner feelings to come out. And that, that's because there was uh, total trust and also, yes, being in nature. I mean, I realize now that nature is a huge uh, force in my life and, and I'm gonna, from going forward, gonna be doing more of these. And Patrice, kind of like hitting on what Monica was saying of, you know, having that visual and being able to look at something and appreciate it from afar, how, how did that, that unbotheredness of the man, how did that translate to you uh, taking it back to the studio? Because, I mean, you captured it so well. I mean, like, I, I, it's, almost, it's almost like he wasn't even waiting for the bus. It's almost like the, 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 the Metro card is like an oxymoron. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's just sitting there, you know, to just to read his paper. I mean, me being an East Coaster as well, you know, especially in Philly, we know that people just go to the bus stop just to read, you know, because they know nobody's going to bother them because they think they're crazy. You right. know, so things, right. things, something simple as that. So how are you able to translate that into your oil work in the studio? Um, for me, you know, the, the reference image is really, really important. So, I just tried my best to get the clearest um, possible photo that I could of him and try to, um, I guess, conceptualize it enough that it would make sense on a metric card. So like shrink it down and crop it enough so that you could still see like the newspaper. So as we bring it up yeah. while you're talking. You can still see the newspaper and, you know, of course, getting uh, his hood and his mask in the frame. So, yeah. Where, like when you, when you uh, asked him or came up and kind of like hinted at taking the photo, what kind, if you had to give an idea of his personality, who would you say this person is? What kind of a person would you say he was? You know, I feel like this man is just, he enjoys being outdoors, you know, even though he's, you know, um, participating in a, a solo activity, just reading his newspaper, he enjoys just going out and being amongst people. So it, that's really the most interesting thing is that because it's COVID and we have to keep our distance, he still feels I guess the need to be amongst people. Do you so. think, do you think the newspaper was like kind of evident? Cause I, I kind of do like kind of the evident sign of like normal social distancing, like leave me the fuck alone type of thing to where it's uh, like, I'm reading my newspaper, right. you know, that type of social. Cause that's, that's what I saw with this. I was like, man, that's true New York social distancing. Like I got my mask on and my paper or my headphones. Leave me the hell alone. Right. <laughs> and people stayed away from him, too. You know, he was on a bench all by himself. <laughs> he was definitely giving off those vibes of, you know, it's just, this is my time. This is my space. Exactly. So what made you um, feel that it was perfect to execute that on the Metro card instead of a larger canvas or, you know, maybe a sketch? Um, you know, I think just because 
the New York City subway is just such a large part of New York. You know, it's just, even during the pandemic, you know, um, bus fare was free. You know, they decided not to charge people what? for it. <laughs> yeah, going on the train or going on the bus. Um, homelessness is a huge, huge problem in subways. Yeah. And right where he was sitting, you know, there's always a lot of homeless men just sleeping on the benches and just milling about. And just the fact that eventually the Metro card is going to be extinct. You know, mm. I kind of wanted to just kind of like immortalize his image onto the Metro card. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even think about it that way, you know, as you know, with the yesteryear concept with everything going digital as we are you know, in this space right now, um, with people using their phone, you know, the iPhone wallet and things like that to maybe in the future use the trains and things like that, this Metro card would be a different, you know, form or be a different format. So having this handheld physical thing is definitely a form of yesteryear. I mean, that's, wow, that's, that's amazing. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. One other thing that I kind of, got about this is that all the colors were so well coordinated mm. you know in this piece it almost looks like a photoshop gradient you know to where it starts off with the blue but it goes through the the rgb color and then ends up into the the gray of the paper kind of like you know signifying like oh yeah it's cold outside right. but also like it's he's he's color coordinated for the weather mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I tend to use a lot of blue in my work too. So that just gives it a cool vibe. Mm -hmm. And also, just because the way that the cropping of the images, I didn't want to get the background because I feel like it wouldn't be much of the background to see. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't really add much to the image. So I just decided to paint it black. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that just, I mean, you could tell that he's outside just because of his, his outfit still. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think also with you, given the background, you know, the the infinity, you know, with the black, you know, or I like to think that solid colors in the back of things, you know, leads to infinity. Um, it allowed the viewer to focus more on his attributes, you know, like his 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 eyes, um, the wrinkles around his nose, um, the the fabric in his scarf, you know, the just the puff in his jacket it allows those type of features of the artwork to be brought out. Um, and it, it really, really, you know, tells me that for one, it's cold. And for two, that it's, it's part of his, his normalcy. This is part of his every day. So this is his routine. So whatever portraits that he's looking at in that paper are the portraits of the day before, you know, he's actually embodying, you know, the essence of the theme of the show. That's why it was interesting when you sent this piece. I was like, man, you know, that's that's right, right up on, you know, right up on it. You know, he's pretty much checking out the portraits of the day before, the stories of the day before, um, and being able to take it in. You being able to capture that and capture that on the physical item that will be, in a sense, yesteryear was just, I thought it just all came together so brilliantly and, you know, it was just awesome and just kudos for that. Thank you. So Monica, as we creep through and go past the, to the next part of the talks, we come up to detoxification and kind of walk us through this as we're looking through, give us a little, uh, as it's make sure it's all going through. Let me restart it back because we might have to go in. There we go. Okay, so um, there's this place in um, in uh, Tasmania called Queenstown, and in Queenstown, um, there they uh their area was totally destroyed by um mining and devastated the land and devastated the um the river was 
called the Red River because it had so much sulfur in it coming from the mine, deforestation, everything. And just a couple of years ago, it started to come back. Mm. And to me, that's the healing power of nature. And here I am discarding these eggs, which is like the toxins from my past and the um, earth is absorbing the toxins and then giving them back, giving, sort of digesting it in a way where it's not toxic for the earth. The earth kind of transforms the toxin into something positive without harming the earth. It's sort of like this relationship, this symbiotic relationship where I can get healing. Every time I'm out in nature, uh, I, I feel healed. And this is sort of the process that happens to me every time I go out in nature. This is kind of a um, performance that expresses the healing that I receive. Um, and so I'm discarding and then going towards this healing part. One, one question I had throughout this is, what were you thinking when that was going on? Like literally what was going through your head? Because remember, you know, thankfully for me being a part of this project, I was so excited to work with it. But what people can't see is that I'm all the way down, down there, you know, down the road where people are. And, you know, in this moment, you're by yourself, you know, like, so what was going through your head during this moment? Yeah, it was, it was really about just being one with nature and just really saying this, this is it, like time to, you know, time to become the person that you're supposed to become basically. Um, and let everything else just go. And so here's where the transformation part happens, um, where the transition um, goes from the discard to really being, and you know, nature has always been my best friend. Um, and just kind of like gratitude and but it really was intentional. I just didn't know you captured it. And so when I when I saw it, I, I said, oh my gosh, it's it's all there. It's just, everything's there. Everything that I was saying while I was um, in the middle of the performance was clear. Yeah, it's one of those things to where like, you know, even when we talked, I didn't completely know what was going on, but I knew that I had to keep, you know, eyes on you because I knew you were performing. So in a sense, like I'm, I'm taking the seat, even though I kind of had the controls, I'm taking the seat that I am now and observing because this format is what I actually was watching as it was being created. You know, so in that sense, I'm did you I was watching the performance through the screen because remember I'm not I'm technically not physically there. So how how did you expect this to translate into a installation form? To me, um it's it is very immersive. Like I I honestly I just had no expectations. I just knew what I saw with your Black Lives Matter um films that they were so emotional to me while looking at them and so present but i had no idea that you would you would actually capture the, me inside out as opposed to the the facade that i've always maybe carried around um you really captured the essence of my soul at performing um, and to me, that's stunning. I, and, and then the, you know, the, the other things, just pointing out the shadow here, I, I was not aware of the shadow. I was not aware of how the land, how I would look with the land, because I had never done it before. 
I, I didn't know that I could, was going to be able to see the relationship that exists. Yeah. Because I, I think that that's what you're showing is you're showing the, that I do have this relationship that um, couldn't be expressed any other way but in this form. Like it, it just, uh, being on the ground level and watching this performance could never do this justice, in other words. I mean, look at this, like from above, it's just. And also I wanted to mention that Badir did the music and when you watch the- You're giving me too much credit here. This is your performance. I understand, but at the same time you have to, like if you pay attention to the music, the music it, it looks as if, it sounds as if, looks as if the music was accompanying my performance, but Badir matched the music to the performance, which is, and the music is perfect. So it's, it's just a very nice collaboration. One of my favorite parts about, you know, this piece in the area that we chose is that this looks like you're laying on a rug the higher that you get you yes. know it doesn't look like the actual earth anymore it looks like you're laying like possibly on a rug or or something like that it's um, very personal it's almost like it's my space it's my it's my space it's i mean you made it into and, and that's how i see it as that the space is it's a very site specific project like it couldn't have happened that way anywhere else yeah it's really cool. And I have, I have, uh, before, before we move on to the next piece, I wanted to talk and bring in, since we were talking about a lot of the different um, self portraiture and everything that goes on, I have wanted to share, if Patrice doesn't mind, this piece that she did that I really enjoy. And I wanted to talk about this, Patrice, because as I, as I said earlier, you can see literally the emotion of the oil and everything. And I, I compare it to your works, like, and that's why I'm glad, you know, you two ladies were together because the dichotomy and the contrast, you know, with, you know, Monica with that going up, the drone going up and you're seeing the texture around you laying there and with Patrice's pieces, you can see the texture almost like if you're taking a drone view and you're looking down as if this was the texture of, you know, mountains or, uh, you know, ground, like the, the road or rivers, like it's, it's beautiful. And I compared the two works um, to that, you know, because of, you know, just the, for one, Patrice is looking up you know, and kind of looking up like she's looking up at the drone or whatever, or the sky, you know, going up, but she's capturing, you know, the light, the, the light beautifully and, you know, the oil, you know, I don't know how the texture is coming out as it is in the digital world. Like I'm, I'm literally blown away. Um, you know, so with both of both of you ladies, I think, you know, ha have a performance in the work and I can't overstate enough, you know, just the, the amount of emotion that goes into both of the works that were in the show and how much they relate because it's, they're, they're, they seem like, to me, um, one's a release and one's also a one's taking in, you know what I mean? Like Patrice, it seems like you're, you're bringing in the light. You know what I mean? And Monica, you're shedding the past. And it's like, you're taking those two contrasting views and it just, it's just mind blowing to me. So Patrice, when was this piece created? Um, I created this piece, I think early 2019, yeah. How large is this piece? This is very small. I think it's small. about wow. eight inches by 10 inches. Yeah, so 10 inches. Eight high. inches by 10 inches? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. 
this looks like it could be, you know, maybe a 60 inch painting, you know, especially with the way it's photographed, you know, it, it, it has so much life on it. What, what's your, what's your favorite part about portraiture? Uh, definitely the skin, definitely the skin. I don't know, something about capturing just like the translucency of skin and the, the veins underneath the variations of color and like discoloration sometimes. Oh, sorry. Click <laughs> on. Sorry, I'll get it back. Sorry. So I'm trying to click through these different. And we're back. So. Yeah, just, um, I don't know, I just love capturing the face. And the eyes are probably the most, because they're just so emotional. And they're just like, I don't know, they say everything about a person. That's probably my favorite part, besides the skin. My favorite part of this work is the blue splotches to the left. Where, how did you know that they were necessary in capturing the opposite of the light? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's, well, first of all, I love ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is like my favorite color. But besides that, when I took the, the reference photo, um, like I was sitting right in front of my TV. Mm -hmm. So, and it was during the daytime. So the TV kind of just reflected that blue light wow. onto my skin and onto the uh, earring and onto the shirt. And I thought, you know, I really want to just put like um, an undiluted uh, blob of ultramarine blue right there just to, just to make it pop. And how long did it take you to get the detail in the shirt? I mean, my goodness, I mean, just with the different cross hatches and cross hairs alone, you know, that seems just like, wow. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. It's a good obsession. I mean, it's, it's a good obsession. Like. Uh, it actually took me shorter time to paint the shirt than it did to paint the face and the neck. Why is that? Yeah. Um, I just like building up, and that's really where the texture comes from. It's just building up the skin, just layer by layer. Yeah. How many layers would you say is on the actual skin? Hmm. I would say probably between seven to 10 layers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Is, the, is that eight by 10 piece of paper or cam? Is that heavy? Is it, you know, is it? I mean, with a lot of that, with all that oil on it, it's got to have some type of weight to it. Um, I don't know. Oil is just, it's, it's magical. You know, I think the, it just, the, I paint on a wood panel, so it kind of just, it carries the weight perfectly. Yeah. How did you think your work would translate into a virtual exhibition? Um... Hmm. Well, I guess just kind of how it would translate on um, Instagram, but I guess a little more immersive just because they're able to just kind of virtually walk up to it mm -hmm. and they can, you know, zoom in. But it's definitely different than being able to see it in person. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. They're missing. I can imagine. Monica, how do you, how was your uh, uh, expectations of participating in a digital exhibition because of your work being so um, install heavy? Yeah, um, I really um, felt that this could work. I mean, I, I feel that this performance could work in person and also uh, be exhibited as a video film in person, but um, I've seen other people have huge success with film um, and video on, on Zoom and on, uh, so I was really happy to be, to have this piece in here because 
I knew that it could translate as well um, online um, as it could. I mean, it's a different experience in person. Installations are different, but it's a different kind of immersion. And, and I'm, I feel that the immersion part of it does work. So that's why I'm, I'm really, really happy that it, it, does, it really does work. And the, the drone um, does it in a way that is just not, like I was saying before, it's not your typical film where there's a set and the actors have to behave a certain way in order to be seen. This is all the angles, it's 3D within the 2D space. So uh, it, to me, it was, um, it works just as well, um, or I don't know, in a way better online than it would in person. Do you feel that the viewer can get more out of your uh, portrait installations, in a sense, digitally, because they have time to move around them, in a sense, more than they would be, let's say, at a fair? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's what, the only thing that's really, truly missing, and that's what made me, I mean, first of all, there's the visitor. The visitor... and in my installations is just as important as the art because then the response um, from the visitor and also usually I do a performance uh, portion during my installation. So it's the interaction between the visitor and the, and the artist that's key to um, my live um, um, installations. So here you don't really get that, but you're seeing a part of me that maybe I wouldn't, that you wouldn't see um, in an in installation work, because I would be more of a, per, more of performer, whereas here I was myself doing the work. Yeah. Do you think, um, well, this question is for both of you ladies. Um, do you think that portraiture will remain important or, or do you think it will be more important or less important going into the future as uh, things become more uh, second lifey in a sense where people are creating avatars and you know all these different new personalities and new ways of um, using their physical being online, do you think actual portraiture will still be uh, what it is today? Um, I think it'll be just as important, maybe, if not more, just because, you know, just like Monica said, you know, she was able to be her true self in the video, even though there was kind of like this voyeuristic uh, drone, you know, following her or just or monitoring her. Um, I think even if, you know, people, you know, just like on Instagram or TikTok or any type of social media, it just depends on how they choose to portray themselves or to, uh, choose to capture their image and present it to the world. So I think people are performing like self-portraiture online. Mm. So, yeah. I love that. That is that is the truth. That is yeah. so true. I love it. Yeah, that's yeah, even if they're not portraying themselves, it's still a, a portrait of that person in that time and space, uh, wherever they are, whenever, whatever year, whatever you know. It's it's a snapshot of their history. It's a, like an autobiography kind of. Right. Yeah, that's. That's a great analogy. Um, okay, I want to go back into the exhibition a bit and play Monica's the other film so that way we can give it a little look. See, and Monica, please go through. And okay, this one is called um, "Dear Son." Thank you. And um, I have Lyme disease and I've had it since 1991. And, you know, I got it on the East Coast and I was also living on the East Coast and just suffering 
in the cold weather constantly. And when I moved to Los Angeles, you know, it's so dry here and the sun, no matter what time of the year, the sun is so healing and um, rejuvenating. And I've not had the pain that I used to have in my joints and in my muscles the way I did when I was living on the East Coast. So this is, um, this is just really saying thank you to the sun for healing me and um, I love the light too. The light here is really. And where did this concept come from? This one was just a way of, I didn't have any inspiration for this one except for the Lyme disease, to be honest, um, as far as the healing goes. But again, it's, this, it's the mask costume. So um, here I was carrying around, again, the weight of the illness and the weight of living with it for so long. Uh, it's like 29 years now that I've had it. Um, Most people don't realize the ducks in the back. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> like there was just a whole family of ducks looking like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, we were so lucky. I mean, but you're, um, I had chosen a different space, um, but he wasn't allowed to fly his drone there because of the FAA regulations. So we went to this place um, that he was familiar with and it just happened to have this little space. And I was like, that's where we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, so we jumped the gate and we did everything <laughs> to get it. So we went in full graffiti mode to make yeah, this Yeah, it was open. nice because then people could look from above. They could watch, yeah. but they didn't. They didn't, they couldn't come into our space and I really made good use of the whole space there. Um, and um, it just felt, you know, very shamanic, I guess, to be a, a shaman and to give back, to, to speak to the sun and the earth and to be grateful um, for, for that, for the space of being able to be, you know, well, and because of nature, because of the healing of nature, and um, be happy about the recovery <laughs> that I experienced, and and really that, again, it's very site specific because even though I had chosen another space this piece could have not could not have happened in that other space um this it would have been completely different and and maybe not even not even as successful because the um the drone was able to um come down low at, be at all different levels while i was moving around it was um so it, i think there was more ability to to maneuver the drone here. How different for you was it having the drone as a creative tool instead of using it uh, to, you know, for its normal use of looking at architecture or, you know, filming a uh, scene of an actor or an actress uh, as part of a, a movie or something like that? I, I think Patrice just nailed it on the head there, you know, like that it's voyeuristic. It, it, it's, it really, I really just trusted you. And I said, I don't care where it is. I'm not going to pay attention to it. And I trust him and I'm going to just be in the moment. And I think that's what it does is that it's just looks like you're looking at somebody who is by themselves mm -hmm. and not knowing that you're even there and and that's what uh that's why i love it so much too is that it's really um 
very, very personal and very revealing. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know, I had no idea what this, I mean, this is, it's so clear to me that this is what I need going forward is to be able to be in these spaces, um, express myself in the space that I'm in intuitively and allow the drone to do its work and, and um, pick up things that I didn't know I was revealing. How do you think the social distance aspect of everyday life plays into the part of this performance or both performances? Um, well, it, they would not exist without having to be social distanced. <laughs> they wouldn't. Um, I mean, it, it's actually a, such a gift in a way, like not in a, in a way, it's in a big way because now I have something that I can do with my work that can exist in socially distanced space. Whereas my, as I said before, my installations became homeless, but now here I have some, another type of medium that I can use that can be used under all circumstances um in the coronavirus yeah it's 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 almost better that we're socially distanced because then this uh maybe there would be too many people around we wouldn't have been able to film there were, there were a lot of people that day and there were a lot of people stopping and but you were able to edit them out <laughs> Yeah, one of the things about these type of films is that, you know, we forget that, you know, that there is a filmmaker or there is sometimes a crew besides uh, behind performance that we really don't see, you know, when they're playing. Um, just like what Patrice was saying as well, there's a whole wall behind the person that's sitting there, there's the outside, but does that really matter? is is what matters what you as the artist choose to focus on or you as the viewer chooses to focus on you know so you know one of those things about portraiture that i love is finding out what attracts my eye you know like the blue and patrice's you know last portrait that we've seen the self-portrait you know that was amazing or you know just the color scheme you know or even you know seeing how as you go higher in the drone, the, the, the ground starts to look like, you know, uh, carpet, you know, or fur or whatever it is, just being able to have the elements change themselves yeah. Yeah. around you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I'm looking at this right now, it just doesn't look like even you're there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> just you also not even like, making eye contact with the drone. Yeah. It just gives off that vibe that you're in your own world. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, because I think actually on, when we were shooting detoxification, there was one part when I was like, Monica, come back. And you just, you just didn't hear me. <laughs> just I didn't off. know, I didn't even know you but, said yeah, that. I was just like, oh, okay, well, we're going to keep going then. Like, you know, we're just going to rock it. I'm not going to. You know, I'm not going to let it go because it, it was like around the time when those two uh, those two guys that were walking. Yes. And they were like, you know, there's eggs all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, don't worry. We're cleaning them up. This is we're shooting the project. And they were like, oh, cool. OK, cool. You know, but it's just, you know, that response of all of that's happening around this moment, but we choose to only focus on this moment. Right. Yeah, I love that about them. I love that, um, that they work so well, even after the editing, you know, that, um, that 
even after editing the people out, it didn't, it doesn't take, it enhances the project to me. And it does. And I feel um, very inspired actually to do something that may be in the midst of say like downtown LA, you know, like how would it work if, if, uh, if I found an empty um, parking lot that was more urban? I bet you that I was thinking that the space, it could be just as site specific, but with a different vibe, you know? Yeah. Like nature is, can be urban too. Yeah. Most definitely. So as we start to close down on our on our hour talk, um, I wanted to have I had one last question, and just for both of you ladies, and we'll start with Patrice on this one too. Um, where do you see your work going in the future? How do you see your work evolving? You know, in a virtual or the physical space. Yeah, for me, um, I really want to get into kind of translating my paintings into video form. So that would really work, I think, well in a virtual space. Nice. Yeah. What about you, Monica? Um, I'm going to do more of these. And I've also looked into other digital formats that um, are generally used for other purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, and going to figure out how to use those to, um, to get on, to, 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 to be more accessible online. Um, I'll eventually, when it's safe, I'll definitely go back to doing more installations, but, um, I have a feeling that this is going to be a, a huge, uh, part of my work. And I, I actually would love at some point to be, to see an entire room full of these performance pieces with the drone. Nice. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for your time and your participation patient in the talk tonight. Um, I'm super excited to have you as part of this. I can't say it enough and was super inspired just hearing the stories and even taking part in the creation, you know, of not only just these, uh, the drone, you know, thing, but the virtual exhibition of what's actually taking place. I'm more than honored that you chose to work with me. Um, so thank you ladies so much. And thank you to everybody who's on the call um, and has been joining us all day. I mean, it's been literally well, the last two days actually, because it's been kind of like a fair of just talks, but it's been very enlightening and very cool. Um, and they will be available for recapping and rewatching and studying and all that uh, later on tonight. So thank you everybody for coming and have a great night. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, dear. And thank yeah, you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Patrice. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Uh, it was nice to be with you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us, Badir. Thank y'all. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.